And the small little big cat from FCA is finally out, the much awaited Jeep Compass. Well, it all started a couple of months ago when we saw spy shots of the car on our Facebook page. We got you exclusive access to the Compass from the Geneva International Motor Show. Then we had a look at the car being produced at the Ranjan Gao facility. And then we got to finally drive the car in Goa and we came away mighty impressed. However, the biggest googly of all in the automotive industry hands down this year is the pricing of the Jeep Compass. Starting from a price of 14.95 lakhs all the way to 20.65 lakhs, we did not see this coming. However, this price brings out some very, very interesting questions. Where exactly the Compass stands? Because of this price, the Compass is a competitor in quite a few segments in the industry. First off, if you're one of those people who are looking to upgrade from a Vitara Brezza or a Ford EcoSport, essentially a sub 4 meter compact SUV, well, your next best option is really a Duster or the Creta. But think about it for a minute. The Jeep Compass at its current price is about a lakh rupees more expensive than the Duster or Creta. So for a lakh rupees more in terms of premium, you get access to a completely different segment altogether. Then there are cars like the Tata Hexa and the Innova. Well, they do sort of fall in this price bracket. However, those are MPVs, which are completely different cars altogether. But it got us really thinking, what true competition does the Jeep Compass actually face in India? Well, honestly, in this segment, there isn't much to go around. You have cars like the Honda CR-V. However, we're not really going to take it into consideration because that car, well, doesn't really sell as much. So we believe that there are only two real cars that the Jeep Compass has to face in terms of stiff competition, and that is the Hyundai Tucson and the XUV500. Now coming to the exteriors, I think the Tucson is the most well-balanced design of the three. The XUV500, it is quite a looker, but I feel like it's a little too over-designed for my personal liking. And then you have the Jeep Compass, which is a little too boxy and it looks too much like a Grand Cherokee. However, the design of the Compass, I should say, is more function than it is form. So first off, how big is the Compass against the other two cars? Well, in this case, it goes to the XUV500. It is by far the largest amongst the three, followed by the Hyundai Tucson and then the Compass itself. And this also has a bottom line on the boot space. Now, on paper, the XUV500 offers only 93 litres of boot space. That's primarily because of the third row that stacks up. The Hyundai Tucson has about 513 litres of boot space and the Jeep Compass offers around 491 litres of boot space. But if you fold the seats down on the XUV500, it offers well over 500 litres of boot space, which means that in this case, the XUV is the biggest of the lot. Now coming to the features, all these three cars are feature loaded. You've got great infotainment systems with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. However, on the XUV500, Apple CarPlay isn't available just yet, but Mahindra tells us it's going to be available on a future date. Now they are come feature loaded, so it means that all cars come with dual airbags, ABS and EVD. But the Jeep Compass misses out on some very, very critical features. You don't get driver's side electrical adjustment, you don't get a sunroof, you don't even get cruise control. Tucson has all of that as well. So in this case, when it comes to the feature list, I feel like the Hyundai Tucson takes the cake purely because even the infotainment system is the best of the lot and it offers the most comprehensive amount of features. Alright, moving on to the engine options. The XUV500 has two engine options. We have that 1.99 litre diesel engine that's only available in the NCR region and the 2.2 litre diesel engine as well. Then you have the Jeep Compass that has a 2 litre diesel and a 1.4 litre petrol. But in this case, the Tucson offers a 2 litre diesel and a 2 litre petrol as well. If you look at the power figures, the Jeep Compass slots in right between the Tucson and the XUV. Now, all three cars come with a choice of automatic and manual gearboxes. However, the Compass comes with a 7-speed dual-class transmission. Now, this in theory should mean that the transmission is going to be a lot more smoother than the top converter units you find in the other two cars. The Tucson does not come with all-wheel drive. Now, Hyundai tell us that the car is going to get all-wheel drive in the latter half of 2017, but I wouldn't hold my breath if I were you. The XUV500 and the Jeep Compass come with all-wheel drive. However, the Jeep Compass has the select train all-wheel drive system that Jeep is so famous for. And if Jeep know how to do one thing, is that to take a car off-road. With the select train management system, you can essentially tell the car what kind of surface you're driving on and it automatically optimizes the all-wheel drive system to cater to that specific surface, helping you get out of sticky situations. Although the all-wheel drive system on the XUV500 is from Borg Warner, I still feel that the compass here takes the cake. 
Moving on to the ride and handling, well here as well I feel that the Jeep Compass has the edge primarily because of the FSD technology in its suspension. Now frequency selective damping is what it's called, essentially it helps the car alter the suspension characteristics to cope to different road conditions. So it can be really supple when you're in sticky situations and when you're driving over broken roads to being more stiffer especially when you're in faster corners or if you're driving more enthusiastically. Now this technology is comes standard across the range with all Jeep compasses so that is a huge plus because it definitely makes a huge difference to the way the car drives and I feel that the compass is more comfortable and more sure footed in the corners compared to the XUV500 and the Hyundai Tucson. Now at this price the Compass is certainly a very tantalizing proposition, it's well built, it drives really well, it has genuine off-road capability. However, price is only half the battle. Let's not forget that FCA still has to improve on its dealer and service network. They have told us that they're doing so and there are a couple of other factors that are going to play out in the rest of the year. So we are excited to see how the Compass fares. But until then, what do you think of the Compass's price? Do you think it's worth it? Well, you can let us know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching this video, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.